Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Mary Vinita Thomas, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Central University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss the module on School Education in Japan and Russia. The main objectives of this module are to understand school education system of Japan, to get acquainted with the policies behind the implementation of school educational system in Japan, to compare and contrast the educational system of Japan and other countries, to get an insight and reflect on the school educational system of Russia, to understand the policies behind the implementation of school educational system in Russia, and to compare and contrast the educational system of Russia with other countries. So first, let's go on to school education in Japan. It is necessary to develop love for one's culture through the country's educational system because it strengthens nationalism. This is possible through the adoption of a national system of education. The history of education of USA, UK, Japan and France indicate that the people of these countries believe in their traditions. So, in the Japanese educational system, adequate attention has been paid to the preservation of Japan culture and traditions. Consequently, in their systems of national education, we find the foundations of cultural consciousness. So, the school system. Japan's school education system is divided into pre-primary, primary, elementary, junior high school and high school. The kindergarten. The kindergarten or preschool is nationally recognized as a type of school under the school education law which mainly provides a more structured education for children of 3 to 5 years age. The nursery school. These schools are considered not as schools but as welfare centers which provide basic education and support to children. They are often used as daycare centers by parents who are not in a position to look after their children full time because of their work or other circumstances. Education prior to elementary school is provided at kindergartens and daycare centers. Public and private daycare centers take children from age one on up to five years old. The programs for these children aged 3 to 5 resemble those at kindergartens. The educational approach at kindergartens varies greatly from unstructured environments which gives importance to play and highly structured environments which focuses the child to pass the entrance exam at a private elementary school. Primary education. Most Japanese school children begin their primary education when they enter age 6. The Japanese school year begins in April and children who have their 6th birthday on or before 1st April enter the first year of elementary school in the same year. A child born from 2nd April would have to enroll in elementary school the following year when they are closer to 7 years old. In Japan, Education is compulsory at the elementary and lower secondary levels. Most students attend public schools through a lower secondary level, but private education is popular at the upper secondary and university levels. Japan's education system plays a central part in Japan's recovery and rapid economic growth in the decades following the end of World War II. Compulsory education in Japan consists of six years of elementary school plus the three years of junior high school ages 6 to 15. Afterwards comes the second part of secondary education that is the high school education. So let's see secondary education in Japan. Lower secondary education in Japan covers grades 7, 8 and 9. Children are generally between the ages of 13 and 15. Japan's compulsory education ends with grade 9. Only 2% of students are dropouts. The percentage of students entering senior high school were 60% in 1960, 
but the strength rapidly grew up to 90% by 1980 and continued to rise each year reaching 98.3% as of 2012. Thus, nearly 99% of school literacy prevails in Japan. Next is the upper secondary education in Japan. Upper secondary school is not compulsory in Japan. 94% of all junior high school graduates entered high school as of 2005. Private upper secondary schools account for about 55% of all upper secondary schools and neither public nor private schools are free. The most common type of upper secondary school has a full-time general program which offers academic courses for students preparing for higher education as well as technical and vocational courses for students expecting to find employment after graduation. More than 70% of upper secondary school students were enrolled in the general academic program in the late 1980s. A small number of schools offer part-time programs, evening courses or correspondence education. The first-year programs for students in both academic and commercial courses are similar. They include basic academic courses such as Japanese language, English, mathematics and science. In upper secondary school, differences in ability are first publicly acknowledged. The course content and course selection are more individualized in the second year. However, there is a core of academic material throughout all programs. Vocational technical programs includes several hundred specialized courses such as information processing, navigation, fish farming, business, English and ceramics. Business and industrial courses are the most popular accounting for 72% of all students in full-time vocational programs in 1989. Special training to disabled students is provided at the upper secondary level mostly with vocational education to enable them to be as independent as possible within society. Vocational training varies depending on the student's disability but the options are limited for some. The government is aware of the necessity of broadening the range of possibilities for these students. Advancement to higher education is also a goal of the government and it makes arrangements to have institutions of higher learning accept more students with disabilities. Now let us see the role of teachers. Teachers are trained in the major subjects they teach and more than 80% are graduated from a four-year college. Classes are large with 38 students per class on average and each class is assigned a homeroom teacher who acts as a counsellor. Unlike elementary students, junior high school students have different teachers for different subjects. Here the teacher, rather than the students, moves from class to class for each 50 or 45 minute period. The curriculum. All course contents are specified in the course of study for lower secondary schools. Some subjects such as Japanese language and mathematics are coordinated with the elementary curriculum. Others such as a foreign language study began at this level from April 2011. English became a compulsory part of the elementary school curriculum. The junior school curriculum covers Japanese language, social studies, mathematics, science, music, fine arts, health and physical education. All students are also exposed to industrial arts and homemaking. Moral education and special activities continue to receive attention. Most students also participate in one of a range of school clubs up to 6 p.m. evening most weekdays, including weekends and often before school as well, as part of an effort to address juvenile delinquency. A growing number of junior high school students also attend private extracurricular study schools in the evenings and on weekends. A focus by students upon these 
and the increasingly structured demands upon students' time have been criticized by teachers and in the media for contributing to a decline in classroom standards and student performance in recent years. The ministry recognizes a need to improve the teaching of all foreign languages, especially English. To improve instruction in spoken English, the government invites many young native speakers of English to Japan to serve as assistants to school boards and prefectures under a Japan exchange and teaching program. Instruction in junior high schools tends to rely on the lecture method. Teachers also use other media such as television and radio and there is some laboratory work. Vocational education. At the primary and lower secondary education levels, all schools offer a general education and students are not exposed to vocational training. At the upper secondary education level, general, vocational and specialized programs, agriculture, industry, commerce, fishing, home economics, nursing and social services etc. are provided. The number of students enrolled in academic programs are increasing. In 1990, it accounted for nearly three quarters of all students. Half of the total teaching hours are allotted to non-vocational academic subjects. Japanese school education is free from narrow vocational skill training. Japanese companies and factories have their own in-company training systems and demand graduates who are hired into the companies with acquired basic and fundamental competencies. Now let us see some distinctive features of Japanese education as given by Ichikawa's analysis. In 1990, Ichikawa enumerated the distinctive characteristics of the Japanese education system as follows. The first, the way that schooling and school education dominate children's and young people's lives, the privatized development of pre and post compulsory education and the large share of private funding for education, the preference for general education under a single track system, automatic promotion between the grades based on age, the low enrollment of non-Japanese students and adults in schools, the high educational achievement with low level of deviation, the unique screening function of entrance examinations, and the practice of autonomous school management. So dear students, now let us see the policies and provisions on school education in Japan. Japanese education is centralized under the direction of the Ministry of Education. During post-war period, the MOE has controlled school administration, curriculum, pedagogy and educational content in textbooks. The MOE monitors the administration of the appointed prefectural and municipal boards of education and superintendents. The MOE determines the educational budget and subsidizes the prefectural board of education in order to provide equal quality education to all children throughout the nation. Based on the 1987 recommendation by the National Council on Educational Reform, NCER, the Ministry of Education implements large-scale educational reforms for deregulation, diversification and individualization. After World War II, the Fundamental Law of Education and the School Education Law were enacted in 1947 under the direction of the occupation forces. The School Education Law defined the school system which is existing now, six years of elementary school, three years of junior high school, three years of high school, two or four years of university. After the defeat in World War II, the Allied Occupation Government set an education reform as one of its primary goals to eradicate militaristic teachings and democratize Japan. The education system was rebuilt after the American model. The end of the 1960s, there were student protests around the world, including Japan. The main subject of protest was the Japan-US Security Treaty. A number of reforms were carried out in the post-war period until today. 
They aimed at easing the burden of entrance examinations, promoting internationalization and information technologies, diversifying education and supporting lifelong learning. The Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology is responsible for educational administration. In 2000, the Council on Curriculum proposed a National Scholastic Aptitude Test for elementary, middle and high school students to begin in 2003. As of April 2004, more than 80% of the prefectural boards of education enforced a National Scholastic Aptitude Test. By the end of 2003, 45% of schools had security systems such as surveillance cameras, 33% had given students buses for the prevention of crimes and 8% had security guards as on January 15, 2005. Coming to status of school education in Japan, Japanese primary and secondary schools have produced a workforce with solid knowledge and a strong work ethic. There are many reasons for this success. Longer school days, a uniformly high standard curriculum, excellent teachers, active parental involvement in education and respect for education. During the 1980s and the early 1990s, foreign scholars and journalists praised Japanese education for producing an educated and industrious workforce for economic and technological success. The Japanese primary and secondary school education has been successful in producing a generation with one of the highest level of academic achievement in mathematics and science in the world. In 1964, the first international study of achievement in mathematics for 13-year-olds and 18-year-olds discovered that Japanese students scored the highest. In 2003, trends in international mathematics and science study found that Japanese 8th graders ranked 5th of 46 countries in mathematics and 6th in science, while American 8th graders ranked 15th in mathematics and 9th in science. In addition, Japan enjoys one of the highest literacy rates in the world. Almost 100% of children are enrolled in elementary school and the illiteracy rate among children is almost zero. However, Japanese people have a reputation for being less creative and individualistic because of the emphasis on memorization and rote learning in education. The current reform focuses on developing students' creativity and individuality. Local control, elective courses, Comprehensive high schools, volunteerism and community involvement are key elements of American education. But on the other hand, American schools concentrate on basic knowledge, demanding the curricula and testing that have been the foundation of Japanese education. So dear students, now we have discussed the school education in Japan. Next, let's move on to school education in Russia. Russia has a long-standing tradition in high-quality education for all citizens. It is one of the best mass education systems in the world, producing a high literacy rate, 98%, exceeding most West European countries. Russian education is divided into a compulsory basic education and ongoing higher education. Education in Russia is mainly provided by the state and is regulated by the Ministry of Education and Science. Regional authorities monitor education within their jurisdictions according to prevailing framework of federal laws. Russians always show a great concern for education. The right to education is enshrined in the constitution of the Russian Federation. There are compulsory secondary schools, vocational schools and higher education institutions. It is also ensured by the development of extramural and evening courses and system of state scholarship and grants. Education in Russia is compulsory up to the ninth form. The stages of compulsory schooling in Russia are primary education for ages 6, 7 to 9, 10, senior school for ages 10, 11 to 12, 13, and the senior school for ages 13, 14 to 14, 15.
each school has a core curriculum of academic subjects. Before 1990, the school education in Soviet Union was 10 years, but at the end of 1990, the 11 year course officially came in. Education in state owned secondary schools is free. The first tertiary, that is, a university level education, is free with reservations. A good number of students are enrolled for full pay. Male and female students have equal shares in all stages of education except tertiary education, where women are more with 57%. Let's see the general school education in Russia. General school education in Russia consists of primary school, secondary school, and upper secondary school. Education in primary schools start at the age of six or seven and lasts four years. After completing primary school, children continue their general education in secondary schools lasting five years. School children after finishing secondary school can either continue their education in upper secondary schools or in a vocational school or in a technical college. The upper secondary school lasts for two years and ends with a standardized state examination. These examinations test skills in particular subjects. Mathematics and Russian are compulsory subjects. The choice of subjects depends on what subject the student wants to pursue at university or on a vocational training program. The standardized state examination is double as the university entrance examination. The principal language of instruction is Russian, which is an official language and is carried out in all accredited education institutions except preschool institutions. Citizens of the Russian Federation have the right to be taught in their native languages in low secondary school as well as to choose languages of instruction within the range of other possibilities offered by the educational system. School education in Russia. It comprises age group of 7 to 18, primary stage, grades 1 to 3 for the group 7 to 13, provided in primary school or 8-year school, incomplete secondary stage up to grade 8, up to 15 or 16 years of age provided in 8-year school, complete secondary stage, general and polytechnic up to grade 10, Technics and other specialized secondary schools, they provide general and specialized secondary education. It's a three to four year course. Vocational and technical schools provide training for skilled workers for various branches of national economy, one to three year course, depending on the trade. The preschool education, this implies education up to the age of seven years. It is divided into two stages. First, the nursery up to three years of age, then kindergarten for the age groups three to seven. The kindergarten is sometimes subdivided into three groups, junior three to five years, intermediate five to six years, senior six to seven years. The primary and nursery education in Russia. These schools are meant for developing good habits in the children up to three years of age and to keep them healthy. These schools help the working ladies to be free without worries during their work. Children are exposed to physical labor and exercises. The values of cooperation and help are inculcated through games. The Soviet system of education has universal primary, it is nursery age one to three, and kindergarten age three to seven, service in urban areas, relieves working mothers from daytime childcare needs. In the Russian kindergarten, Children are given practice in dance, music, various exercises, and physical education. Various programs which inculcate the feeling of cooperation are implemented in it. Pre-primary education is organized to look after the children of female workers during the time of their work. As per the direction by the education ministry, these schools are managed and supported by the concerned industrial units. Health and physical development of the child are carefully looked after. After nursery education, children between three to seven years of age receive primary education. Before admission in the kindergartens, 
proper atmosphere is created at their homes as nursery schools. Now, the secondary education. 11 year secondary education in Russia is compulsory since 2007. Until 2007, it was limited to 9 years with grades 10 11 optional. Basic general education lasts for 9 years. After this, they continue their education at senior high school to receive secondary general education. They also enter an initial vocational school or non-university level higher education institutions. Secondary general education on the basic of basic general education continues for two years and ends when students are 17 or 18. Secondary education leads to the award of the Certificate of Secondary Complete General Education. Recently, new types of secondary schools have emerged called gymnasium and lyceum, which can be state-owned or private. The duration of studies can exceed that of secondary general schools and the educational programs can be more advanced. The school year extends from September 1 to end of May and is divided into four terms. Study program in schools is fixed. School children or their parents have no choice of study subjects. The next is vocational education. After finishing the ninth form, one can go on to a vocational school which offers programs of academic subjects and a program of training in a technical field or a profession. Vocational education in Russia consists of a basic and secondary level. The basic level of vocational education occurs in vocational schools and is named as vocational lyceums. These institutions train people who wish to become skilled workers. The secondary level of vocational education occurs in vocational schools or vocational colleges and leads to a qualification in one among a number of specialist areas. Students can commence vocational training after 9 or 10 years of their general education. Students choose their vocational training in year 9, have lessons in general subjects, giving them an opportunity to take the standardized state examination and to go on to study at university. In the new school curriculum, in natural sciences and humanities, great emphasis is laid on practical application of knowledge. The evening or shift secondary schools, they provide instruction or a spare time basis to adult workers. Upon completion of a nine-year program, the student has a choice of either completing the remaining two years at normal school or of a transfer to a specialized professional training school. In 2000, many institutions were renamed to colleges. They provide students with a skill training and a high school certificate equivalent to 11-year education in a normal school. The program, due to its work training component, extends to three years. All certificates of secondary education, regardless of issuing institution, conform to the same state standard and are considered at least by law to be fully equivalent. The state prescribes minimum set of study subjects that must appear in each certificate. In practice, extension of study terms to three years is slightly a disadvantage to vocational school male students who intend to continue. They reach conscription age before graduation or immediately after it and normally must serve in the army before applying to undergraduate level institutions. So now let's see the curriculum. General education is compulsory. The basic curriculum has compulsory fields of study such as the Russian language, foreign languages, mathematics, history, political, natural sciences, etc. Each school designs its own curriculum, which is based on state requirements, and there can be some extra or optional disciplines. In Moscow, there are also schools that specialize in certain subjects, such as maths, music, arts, and sports. These schools also offer extra education for children alongside the general courses. Social sciences include subjects as foreign languages, Russian history, world history, 
economic and social geography, law, political science, economics, etc. The natural sciences can cover biology, physics, astronomy, chemistry, ecology, etc. Technology normally includes drawing and a number of disciplines for the imparting of certain professional skills, basic skills of general utility for pupils, home economics, sewing, cooking, metalwork, carpentry, etc. And in upper grades, basic skills for the exercise of certain professions. In addition to these required fields of study, the basic curriculum provides for disciplines specific to the particular region in which the school is located as well as optional disciplines in accordance with the interest of pupil. In practice, each school design its own curriculum, basing it upon the basic curriculum. Moving on to educational assessment in Russia. After completion of primary and basic general education, the students participate in final examination. They are awarded a certificate of basic general education which permit to either secondary general education, to vocational education or to non-university level higher education. All ninth graders have to pass an exam called the state final certification in order to continue on to the last two years of high school. Students who do not pass the exam will continue instead to vocational school. After completing the secondary general education, the students need to pass the state final attestation after which they will be awarded a certificate of secondary general education. This school leaving certificate will allow students to continue to higher education, either vocational education or both non-university and university level education. So dear students, now let us have a look on the policies and provisions related to school education in Russia. The Ministry of Education and Science is the only federal body responsible for implementing state policy and legal regulation at all levels of education and in all kinds of institutions. The majority of state higher education institutions are established and funded by Ministry of Education and Science. Moscow enacted compulsory 11-year education in 2005. Similar legislation existed in most of the states of Russia. Federal subjects of Russia could enforce higher compulsory standard through local legislation within the 11-year federal program. The Ministry of Education and Science regulates only a brief preschool preparation program for the 5 to 6-year-old children. In 2004, the government attempted to charge the full cost of kindergartens to the parents. Widespread public opposition caused a reversal of policy. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the number of preschools decreased. Kindergarten buildings were sold as real estate, irreversibly rebuilt and converted for office use. At the same time, a minority share of successful state-owned kindergartens regarded as a vertical lift to quality schooling flourished throughout the 1990s. Privately owned kindergartens, although in high demand, did not gain a significant share due to administrative pressure. Share of children enrolled in private kindergartens dropped from 7% in 1999 to 1% in 2005. So this was about school education in Russia. Dear students, now let us have a brief review of this module. We first reflected on the school system in Japan, the structure, pattern and curriculum of schools in Japan. We also gained an insight on the policies and provisions available for school education in Japan. And then we discussed on school education in Russia. We got an insight and better understanding of the types of schools in Russia, the curriculum they follow, educational assessment, provisions available, etc. And with this, we come to a conclusion of our session Thank you.